Well, hey, y'all. Welcome to the When We Walk podcast, where we are talking about the things we talk about when we take walks together. Yep. I'm Micah. I'm Shereen. So um, I had an interesting interaction with a guy about walking. Uh Uh-huh. This was several years ago when you and I first started walking together. Yeah. Pre-pandemic. Yep. And um, a couple of my buddies were talking boxer uh-huh. clay and logan and um how you just outed them right here yeah so they'll be fine with it and Good. and so they we were talking about our workout routines okay and i was mentioning the fact that <laughs> um you know i try to go to the gym a couple of days a week and then you and i take walks three or four times a week mm-hmm. and logan was like <laughs> what like are you are you telling me that your walks with shireen are a part of your workout routine as or that though, is your workout for the day kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, that is my workout <laughs> on some days. Yes. And it, I had never thought about that not being like a very impressive thing. <laughs> like I hadn't thought about it at all until it, it kind of, he kind of called me out on like, because this was coming out of the phase where I did like, I had done some triathlons and yeah. things like that. And yeah. so it felt like a very different well, way yeah, of, of working out. Um, and I think I had two revelations. One is that I had that I had now entered into that phase of life where a good brisk walk. I mean, that is that that'll matter. do it. Yeah. <laughs> Second, though, I'm reading a book right now called Strength to Strength and he talks about how a daily walk mm-hmm. is one of the most time-tested proven forms of exercise for the long haul that promotes both physical and mm-hmm. emotional well-being look so at take that. that logan so take walks is yes, what you're saying and walks. it can count as your workout it can <laughs> it yeah. does for me yeah it's anyway nice. yep good fun facts mm-hmm. about walking that it we is. get to share with you all yeah, it's a good thing to do um so we want to talk about the prophetic yeah we feel like it's something that is in the church mm-hmm. but that people are maybe have questions about right Mm -hmm. that it is something um probably that people outside the church look at and might think is a little weird yep because it kind of can come across weird Mm -hmm. um but i think even when you say the word prophecy the prophetic a prophet everyone thinks of something completely different everyone comes with some kind of right you come with an idea of what that Mm -hmm. looks like um so we thought, let's just like talk this out a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So why don't you just start with like, what is the prophetic nowadays? Like, yeah. so, I guess more what, I don't know what you call it, like New Testament prophecy. Is that what you would say? Yeah, that's a good way to say it. So I'll, I'll just back up and say, I think when we take walks, a lot of times we're, we're talking about a dream that we that's had. That's so true. Because you're a dreamer. Yep. Um, we're talking about a word that somebody gave us or maybe a word that we might feel like we have for someone else, kind of processing yep. that together. Yeah, we do that a lot. So it's just kind of a normal part of our lives. It's been a normal part of our lives. Um, I know for me, all of my kind of spiritual upbringing, the prophetic has always been a part of mm-hmm. um, the mix and yeah. in a very healthy way. I know mm-hmm. for you, since really giving probably your life college. to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't know anything about right. it before. probably before. Right. I, I, I had dreams mm-hmm. as a kid. And then after I came to Jesus, someone helped me yep. kind of understand that God can speak through those or use those or the yep. enemy yep. could use them. And so, um, so for us, it's just kind of been a normal part of life. Right. And, um, but I recognize, we recognize it for a lot of people, like you said, um, maybe it's been a negative thing. It's true. Or maybe it's just been a mysterious thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so um, I'll just share a couple things about New Testament prophecy. I'll start with kind of the classic New Testament passage on prophecy. Um, There's, this is 1 Corinthians 14, and I'm just going to read verse 1 and verse 3. It says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. Interestingly enough, that word eagerly desire is the same word that could be translated as lust. Oh, interesting. Lust after, really meaning like have a strong desire for the gifts of the Spirit, for the Spirit of God to really move in manifest ways in your life is really what Paul's saying here, which is interesting. So um, eagerly desire these gifts, especially prophecy. Okay. Um, And I do think too, just to say, I'm trying not to teach too much here, but... (laughs) The fact that he says, follow the, yeah, I am, follow the way of love and eagerly desire. These are, these are expressions of love 
when there are expressions of like power and authority or you're, yeah. you're trying to impress people, you're kind of getting out of the lane there. Okay. Um, so first, Paul's saying you should you should want prophecy in your life as an individual and as a church. Mm-hmm. And then in verse three, he says, um, and this is kind of the defining New Testament passage on prophecy. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. Oh, that's good. And so strengthening, right encouragement, there. comfort. That's yep. the filter through which I believe healthy prophecy comes. And yeah. in the Old Testament, a prophet was a voice of coming judgment. Yeah. To yeah, people. that's definitely what you see. Yeah. But in the New Testament, we see a very different version of that. Okay. And this is really, I think, the most explicit explanation of how prophecy should look uh, among followers of Jesus. That that's it really good. is... Um, not so much one who, you know, who's coming in like telling you something's yeah. wrong or you need to get better at this yes. or you need to do this or maybe even not this is what is coming yep. in your life necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I will say, I think that still can exist in the church, right? Maybe, um, in, in very unique settings. And I'm not going to get into to those types of things, but what we're talking about today is kind of like garden variety. Every day, follower of right. Jesus, hearing God, hearing God's voice, and sharing it that's with others. That's what it is. Like, that's what it is. Hearing right. God's voice for someone and sharing it with others. Yeah, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to throw maybe a curveball at you. Okay. I feel like right now there's kind of this rise of um, I'm I'm not on the TikTok, so you know that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but I do know, like I've seen it in reels on Instagram, and I've heard people talking about her on YouTube too. That um, there's a lot of people sharing like like medium stuff. I think there's even shows out right now that are oh, really popular okay. about oh, really? like mediums specifically sh- kind of, and people are so intrigued hmm. by it. I think people are just yeah. intrigued by that, yeah. right? Why Why do you think for years horoscopes were a thing? Right. And, and I know this is totally, like this is completely different, but I think that is almost what some Christians can think think if you didn't grow up with a right thinking of prophecy right you think that first or there's people outside the church who see that and that's intriguing and I wonder why aren't you open to hearing God's voice then Mm -hmm. because I mean that is something other what do you what do you think about that yeah so um I'm not as tuned into that world um I wasn't as aware of that um but it doesn't surprise me I remember hearing a stat um, years ago on the Today Show, Matt Ooh. Lauer talking oh, about... Oh, wow, that was a long time yeah, ago as well. it was. Well. <laughs> it was. 75% of Americans, again, old stat, but 75% of Americans would love to hear God speak. Oh, wow. Them. Isn't that interesting? So huh. I think there's something inside of us, this like this like holy longing, this like curiosity. I mean, the scripture to, said it. Yeah, you should long for it. Yeah, to, there's something in us that longs for connection to the divine, and one mm-hmm. of the ways that that plays out is through his voice or okay. its voice, depending on, you know, your, to. yeah, what you're listening to. And so it doesn't surprise me that that's a big deal. I do think um, in our world today, like spirituality. Yes. Is that, and some, some people say it's like at an all time high in terms of curiosity around spiritual things. I think so. Um, even though it seems like Christianity is not. So um, I would, I think I get it. I understand the, I guess what I'm saying is I understand the curiosity around it and I understand right. kind of the draw to it. Um, but uh, in, in my understanding of, of what we read in scripture is um, there are more than one voice that is mm-hmm. out there that wants that to speak to so us true. in the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. So the voice of God, um, but then the enemy has a voice. Like mm-hmm. he, he wants to influence us. He wants to lead us in a particular direction. And he is a master counterfeiter. Yes, that's what I was going to say. It's, yeah. it's almost like it kind of mimics mm-hmm. what God does, but in a, like yep. a counterfeit way. Yeah, yeah. So I think there are some guidelines that can help us um, kind of discern between what might be the Lord speaking to us and what might be some other source, whether yeah. it's our own thoughts and feelings or whether it's something from the spiritual realm trying to deceive us. Um, and it really has to do with the word of God. Like, right. um, if you know the Bible, then in the more, you know, the Bible and not just can quote verses, but the more you understand scripture and then understand the heart of God that's revealed through scripture, the more you'll understand his voice when it, mm-hmm. when it shows up. Yeah. Does that make sense? I definitely think, I mean, just talking about the other spirits or things you can listen to, that could be a whole nother mm-hmm. conversation. Maybe yeah. we'll do another day, but I do mm-hmm. think. I think you're right. I think you have to personally 
know scripture pretty well. You have to have an intimate connection with Jesus and have practiced hearing his voice um, to also be able to discern, which I know we'll probably talk about that. But Mm -hmm. I do think knowing the difference between both of those and staying in the word. Great example that just I'm just thinking of um, our youth. One of our youth pastors here was telling me about this. Somebody in a local high school took their own life. Oh. And um, a, a young lady who knew this girl felt like she heard God say, you need to take your life to, to honor her life. Oh, my word. That is yeah, not that something is God not would say. Right? Never. So if you know the word of God right. and the heart of God, you can, maybe you, can you might discern. hear something like that, but you know, and I, so then I would say, and not just the Bible, knowing the Bible, but being in Christ-centered community. Yep, community. It always comes back who to you that. You can bounce these ideas, these thoughts, these impressions off of, and they yep. can kind of help you. Like, ah, I don't really know if that was the Lord. That might just be your own desire. That might be something other that's trying to deceive you. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. I think that's good. Okay, so for us, we've already we've experienced this. Like you said, we've grown up kind of in our spiritual life, like yep. hearing God's voice in these different ways. Mm-hmm. Maybe share some of the ways you feel like you've heard God's voice. Yeah, I feel like you have more cool stories than I do, but I'll start with like a really simple one, which was um, when we first started doing prophetic presbytery here at LifeGate, um, which is our little weekend once a year where we bring in prophetic voices to come and speak to to our people. people. Yep. Um, And you and I were candidates. We were the ones on stage. Oh, yeah, our very first time. Yep, these Mm -hmm. three presbyters were about to speak over. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, the first word that was given to us, and you were kind of like not, you were oh, I not that you not, had a struggle with the prophetic, but no. at the time you were just like, I just, I'm I was not, not in the right it. headspace yeah. to receive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. Right. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. There were all kinds <laughs> the, of things. There was going a whole on. thing going on. And so we got up there um, willingly and openly. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first thing that um, Clark Whitten was the one who said it. And he said, yes. "You." Um, he said, "I just look at you, and I just see a bulldog." Yes, I and remember we just that. Laughed and we laughed, laughed so and hard. Everyone in the room was laughing because we're Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, he yeah. didn't had no idea. Had no idea, and he didn't even know what everybody was laughing about. And, and that it was, was the first thing that yep. was said. And mm-hmm. I, I remember because for me it felt like, okay, deep breath. Like mm-hmm. God is in this. Yeah, yeah. And so that broke the ice for us. It did. Kind of postured that was us to receive. You've had some cool dreams um that were about your own life you've had yeah, some cool words yeah. given to you i feel like for me the prophetic has worked in dreams for me for myself but then also i think for other people mm-hmm. so i'm not the type who just like hears a word from the lord i'm not like that type of prophetic i feel like god's spoken to me through dreams and the obviously the most vivid one for me is when i went to africa mm-hmm. in college yeah. i remember so i had already we had gone on a mission trip together. Yep. We were not even dating. Right. You were actually dating someone else, I think. Was I? I'm I pretty sure so. you were. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But we came back, and I knew I was called to go back and do ministry there. Mm-hmm. And I, I was still wavering of what this would look like because it was going to be ha- the last half of my senior year. I would miss our senior year yep. you know, with my friends and all of that. But I knew God was calling me, and I it was completely solidified when I had a dream one night. And this was before I knew all the details of what I was doing. And I had a dream that I was playing spades. We were big card players mm-hmm. in college. Yeah. Um, and I was playing spades with the couple that I was going to go minister to, like live with and minister to. And then this other girlfriend who was in college mm-hmm. with me. Um, she was a mutual friend of ours. And I remember thinking, oh, that's a cool dream. I mean, I am going to Africa, I think, like everything, if everything lines up. Well, then I remember a couple weeks later, but she you didn't know that she no, had any Yeah, that's plans. what I'm saying. So yeah. a couple weeks later, she came to me and she said, guess what I'm doing? I'm going to Ghana, West Africa, and I'm going to be a teacher there. Mm. And I was like, what? Yes, I'm going to. Yeah. And I was on the path to go. Turns out we ended up living together yes. that whole year. And became such good friends and had this great experience. It really was what I needed to know, especially Mm -hmm. when it was so hard. It was such a hard trip, a hard season of life for me. It was so good to have that from the Lord. And I think God knew I needed that. That was going to be 
this is what your life's going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all ever play spades together? You know what? We tried, <laughs> the, the couple that I was, they were like, we have to play cards. Right. And I think we never, yeah. I mean, we always hung out all yeah. together, but we didn't play cards. So I was thinking one for me was, um, when I was, you telling that story reminded me kind of that same season of life, trying to decide what I would do after college and, mm -hmm. um, eventually landing on that I was going to intern at the Wesley foundation, but still kind of mm -hmm. wrestling with like, um, is this really the, you know, the thing that God has for me? I had plans to like, I'm going to go overseas. Yep. I'm going to plant a church in the middle of nowhere, whatever. Uh, well, where there's people, but you know, where <laughs> maybe an obscure part of the world. And, uh, like and yet unreached. I landed on staying at our college ministry mm -hmm. and serving there as an intern. And there was this little part of me that was like, Micah, did you sell out? Like, did you choose easy path instead of hard path? Those kind of things. And I was kind of yeah. living in that tension. And so the first day of our intern year, um, at the time, the way that things worked was they would just all the desks. Remember, we had that one yep. big intern room. Yep. And there was like 16 desks all just kind of crammed in the middle of the room. They would then they just said, grab a desk, each person get a desk and move it into a part of the room where you sit with your team oh, yeah. with uh -huh. your team and so yeah. I sat with my freshman ministry team and we created a little a little unit over there in the corner by the window and and so the reason I'm telling that is that the room had never been configured like that previously like we just grabbed our desks and everybody set up their little teams and then a student walks in um and uh she sees me sitting at my desk with these three other people and uh, with their desks around me and was like, oh my gosh, you're interning? And I was like, yeah, I decided to intern because I think over the summer, like you made sure this decision she do. didn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you were interning. I had a dream that you were sitting at this desk. No way. In this configuration, like I, I saw what, I saw you right oh, here. Oh, wow. And, um, and it was just such this huge confirmation yes. for me. She said the one missing piece from the whole dream is you had this little nameplate on your desk that just with your first name, Micah on it. Oh yeah. And um, I, I was just like, Oh, that's great. So anyway, it was a really cool confirmation that I had made the right decision that I was on the right track. And then a couple weeks later she got for me yes. a nameplate with my first name on it. And I now think you still have it. I, it's every, I have moved it into every office I've ever had and yeah. I always have it. Um, not as a reminder to people who walk in what my name is, but <laughs> just as a, uh, as it's a, more for um, you. yeah, it's right, just this reminder that did. like, um, God speaks and he's with us. Wow. Well, yeah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So question to you, how would we, um, how can people who are listening, like um, depending on where they may be with the prophetic, thinking of Paul saying eagerly desire, like lust after yeah. the gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy. Um, how do we do that? How do we welcome the prophetic into our lives? Um, I, I think, first of all, it comes down to just a personal connection with Jesus first, mm -hmm. right? Like you have to know him intimately yep. to be able to recognize his voice in your life, to be able to um, walk with him and and practice hearing yeah. and knowing that this is him. So I think walking intimately with him, practicing hearing his voice, but also scripture, mm -hmm. right? Like you said that before, everything we hear, whether it's from others or from the Lord directly, I think we have to be able to take and say, does this match up mm -hmm. with scripture? Cause this is the ultimate kind of prophetic yeah. voice we have directly to relate it to. Yep. And so I think you have to start there. Mm -hmm. It has to be intimate with the Lord. I think the people that I have always, I feel like who brought the most powerful words at times have been people who they just know God mm -hmm. and you see it in their lives. Yeah. You see it in the way they live their lives in the way they talk about God. Yeah. Like they know him intimately. Mm -hmm. And so I think it starts there, but then I think it's practice, right? Yeah. Like for me, I mean, I don't, I'm not the type who hears a word from God. I think we've practiced that. Mm -hmm. That is a thing you yeah. can like practice hearing a word from the Lord mm -hmm. and even, you know, giving it and seeing yeah. how it resonates with someone. And I know people who do that on a regular mm -hmm. basis. I mean, we even have like a course that we offer here for yep. people to do that. I think for me, because I know that the history has been dreams, that mm -hmm. God has spoken to me through dreams, I think just being faithful when he does speak. So like being obedient and faithful when you do hear him. So for me, that looks like I have a dream. 
it might be the most wild, crazy, ridiculous dream. I will do my best to either like voice memo it on my phone or write it in my Mm. journal or somewhere. And I've noticed that in the seasons where I'm really faithful to do that, God continues to give me more. Mm. And then the next layer is like, I'll ask him, is this for me or is this for the other person? Like if there's other people in the dream. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like it's for someone else, I step out and I send it to him. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I have to just release it because then it's not mine to carry anymore. Like I might think it means a certain thing and I can Mm -hmm. give a little backstory, but it's for that person. And whether it's, you know, it means anything to them in the moment or it's something for them for much later. Yeah. I think stepping out in that obedience and mm-hmm. how you present it, I think yeah. it, you do, yeah. it's the same way that um, scripture said it. Like it has to be something you have to present it with kindness, with gentleness, with encouragement um, mm-hmm. that, you know, even if it is maybe even a warning type mm-hmm. dream, I've had those for people. I think the way you present it matters as well. And so I think that's how some of the ways you can cultivate things, right? If you know how God speaks to you, how are you going to be um, obedient to the practice, practicing it, mm-hmm. and then obedient and stepping out when he asks you to step out with it? Yeah. Because because it is, it's for you, but it's also for others. Right. Yeah. So. I think there's that twofold to it. Yeah, and I do think, too, some of the things that are just very natural to us as individuals may be the avenue through which God is speaking. Mm-hmm. So you've always been a dreamer. Right. And it wasn't Even until as a you kid. Really, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't until you really started following Jesus that that avenue be- became accessed for kind of spiritual revelation. I think some people have an active imagination, yeah. Um, some people are just really thoughtful and yep. they might think of so-and-so while they're driving down the road and just their name pops into their head. I think there can be kind of like this holy curiosity around our, our thought life. Yeah. Um, and when some, a thought pops into our hearts, into our minds, um, to, to capture that for a moment, kind of like you do with your dreams and, mm-hmm. and just ask the Lord, is this, is this an impression? Is this a word? Is this something, do you want me to do something with this? Yeah. Cause I actually think God, it's one of the primary ways I think God strengthens the body of Christ is the I way that so. we share his revelation with one another. I mean, For when sure. it comes to preaching, nobody, like, we all just can receive that. Right, normally. nobody questions that as but much. But the prophetic is, in a, in a similar way, it's kind of like interpersonal mm-hmm. revelation sharing from one person to the next about their life. Um, so it can be, that's why it's scary. I yeah, think yeah. It, it's like a little level of vulnerability mm-hmm. for the person sharing, but then the person receiving. Absolutely. And, and I think too, for the person who has the word and feels the leading to deliver it, I think it's also important to realize, um, that you're just the messenger. That's it. You're not yep. the one who's responsible for this person responding properly to the word. Right. You're not the one who needs to make anything happen. Nope. You don't need to to add your own little special sauce to it (laughs) to get them to kind of um, move in the right direction. I think that's where sometimes people feel a little bit manipulated. Yes. Um, That, I I think that's true. Yeah. I think we, you can just very lovingly and gently, Hey, I felt like this was on my heart for you. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to that person to say, all right, let me now process it. So on the receiving end, any tips you would give somebody receiving a prophetic word yeah I think so I have a friend who she dreams a lot like me and she has a lot of dreams sometimes for me and sends them to me and I always appreciate that she just sends them and says like do whatever you want with this but I always ask well what were your impressions initially Mm -hmm. I I like to find out like especially if it's a dream because I know there's emotion behind some of those dreams um, and, and even for the person sharing, whether it's a word or a vision, I think sometimes being open to hear what that person felt or what they might have saw is, is helpful, right? Mm-hmm. They were the one that yeah. had the vision, had the word, had the dream. But then I think you, you receive it with open hands yep. and you take it to the Lord immediately. Uh, you know, I always take them, I write them down or I save them somewhere Um, and I'll go back to it. I think that's part of it because we've noticed like we will have had words given to us in college. I mean, we just talked about it, like a word that was given to you 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I recalled in the middle of our hospital room Mm -hmm. that brought encouragement 20 years later. Mm -hmm. So I would tell people like, if you don't see that immediately, like 
what we tend to do is we feel something, we're having a situation in our lives and we want God to speak into it. Mm -hmm. And so any word we may get, we think if it doesn't apply right now, then it must not be Mm -hmm. for me or it must not be God or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I would say, no, he's not always as immediate as we want Mm -hmm. him to be. In fact, he's probably actually more future Mm -hmm. than we even believe or know. And hold on to that word because we've, done this long enough now that we can look back on words given to us 20 years ago, even five to 10 years ago Mm -hmm. and go back to them and go, Oh, that's what that word meant. Mm -hmm. That was for now. Wasn't necessarily for them. You had that word in 2015. Remember about Uh again, another presbytery, social media and teaching and leading women and I was doing none of that. I was home home with our kids. Overwhelmed. (laughs) Yes. You almost like laughed. I remember you even I think I did laugh on stage. (laughs) Yeah. And you said to me afterwards, I think he mixed this up. I think that was a word for you. I think I did say that. Yeah, you did. And now look at you. And then what was it? A couple years later, I got asked to do social media for Mm Chick-fil-A. We started working there. And then now I'm on staff here and sharing Mm -hmm. with our women and- and very active on social media. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, God's funny. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. So yeah. I think as you receive things, you have to care, like, like take care of it. Yeah. It's like taking good care of something that you, that's precious. Mm-hmm. It's God's word that yep. someone gave you. So I would hold it with open hands and go back to it mm-hmm. and ask God continually, where does this fit? Yeah. When, when do I need this or apply it? Um, that's what I would say. Yeah. I think I that's really good. Yeah, we don't always have to act on it immediately. No, I definitely um, don't. And think if so. it doesn't apply immediately, it doesn't mean we we ditch it either. I think yeah. it's good to keep a record. Um, and oh we, yeah, and you and I do that. Like just things, impressions. Yep. Um, I keep over them the in years journals. That people have we sent printed us out. or given to us. Yep. And sometimes it lands immediately, and sometimes I'm, I'm thinking, ah, oh, just maybe later. Yeah, I do uh, think. One of the things we didn't talk about is that when you deliver, I think you have to be very careful with not just saying, I heard God say, or mm-hmm. thus saith the yeah. Lord, whatever, yeah. you know, weird way that people have maybe yeah. delivered in yep. the past. I think that helps with the person receiving, mm-hmm. right? Like, hey, yeah. I was praying for you the other day, and I just felt like God um, may want to encourage you with this. Mm-hmm. Or I was thinking, like, sometimes it's just easy to say, I was thinking about you, and here's a thought that came to mind. Mm-hmm. Take it for what it's worth. It could be from the Lord or not. Um, I think that helps the receiver posture yeah, yeah. well. Yeah, I think sometimes we can get, again, kind of Old Testament national prophecy yes. that was happening with these these very unique set-apart prophets. We can get that confused with what we're talking about, which is more this New Testament, but like almost more like inter- relational or interpersonal prophecy yeah, where it's just kind of right. one person to another for the en- and, encouragement. Yeah. That's what you yeah, just said. And so, mm-hmm. cause some people will wrestle with like, but if you felt like it was from the Lord, you need to say this was from God because that's, and I think when we're talking on this like relational level, there's this willingness to recognize like, um, where our own humanity gets into the word. Maybe, I mean, Paul talks about, we see through a mirror dimly, like we mm-hmm. don't have it perfect. And so, um, we can share it imperfectly yeah um, that's we can good. share it humbly and say I, i'm feeling this for you from the lord and um it, it there may be a nugget of it that's true there may be some parts of it that aren't quite as clear yeah um, so. but i definitely think we don't need to shy away from it right nope. i think it can can be scary to mm-hmm. some people whether it's you've had a history with it and you feel burned or yeah hurt by it mm-hmm. or you don't and you're interested in some sort of outside voice. Mm -hmm. But I think it's interesting that that passage you read even starts with eagerly desire, like Mm -hmm. long for it. Um, And I think that should be on both sides, right? The gift of prophecy, but then also long to continually hear God's voice. I know we have scripture to hear God's voice, but also long to hear a new and fresh word in the moment. And I think we have to yeah. Keep longing for that absolutely, and longing for the gift, but and then longing to hear his voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really good. And I think for the maybe the skeptic out there or the person who's maybe felt a little bit burned by the gift of prophecy, a great book is He Still Speaks by oh, Tom yeah. Lane and Wayne Drain, who we know and love and trust. They yep. have been prophetic voices for like us. Like know them personally, yep. yes. And been prophetic voices for us here at LifeGate and really all over the country for 
couple decades. Right. And so um, they just a real clear and simple explanation of how prophecy can look in our lives. Yeah. And not mm-hmm. make it scary. Yep. It's not scary. Yep. He still speaks. That's good. Yeah. It's great. So speaking of reading. Okay. Um, what are you reading right now? Like your non-fun. You do. You have all kinds of I fun reading. I have so reading. many fun you reading do. books. Um, um, I can do? only what do. What is just your learning books right now? I can only do one learning book at a time. Okay. I know you have a different brain and space than me. So right now I'm still, like, I've been on this like journey of like learning about women in church leadership and history and the Bible. So I'm on a book called Equal. Mm-hmm. by yeah. um, Katya Adams, yeah, who great. is a pastor in mm-hmm. Boston. And it is really good. Yeah. It's a really I can't wait to read good it. understanding. She covers kind of all the pieces of conversation about women um, in leadership and whether it's marriage and kind of all of those things. Obviously, leans um, egalitarian. Yep. Just for anyone who is, I think that comes across. Yeah. It's called yeah. equal, um, but right. it's really good. I'm mm. really enjoying it. That's great. But I'm taking it so slow because there's so much. That's why I can only do one. Yeah, I can only do one of those kind of books at mm. a time. We should have a whole conversation about that topic at some point. Oh, uh, maybe give me a minute yeah. to dive, <laughs> think I can't about wait it. To read your highlights. <laughs> Um, what about I, you? You I'm always reading, have more than well, me. I have a few. I'm kind of, I, there's a little bit of a traffic jam in my book reading life right now. So, over, and that's because you always have a million because you're prepping messages. Yeah. But, right. Um, yeah. But I, I try not to have too many going on, but, um, this right now I've got, so one I started on sabbatical. So this Whoa, is a you long are time still ago re- that I've just kind of stalled out on. Okay. Um, which is called the promised land. Barack Obama. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I felt led to lead to, to read this, not so much from like political standpoint, uh, but like just from a leadership standpoint. Yeah. And I, don't, I haven't talked to you much about this, but a lot of the thing, his mentality as he was moving from kind of obscurity into the public eye um, are actually many of the same things that I thought kind of moving into leadership over the last oh, three years, kind of in my in, in, your in role. a sense, kind of a place of obscurity yeah. here at the church into moving into a place that's a lot more public. Um, huh. A lot of the same thinking, yep. and, um, which was really interesting. Which is funny because um, then I read Michelle Obama's book this yeah, summer too. And yeah. so it's like the mm-hmm. other side of that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is very funny. And so now it's getting more into like his presidency and politics yeah, yeah. and I'm losing, losing steam on it. So I don't know if I'll pick that up again. But then the other one is um, Strength to Strength which yep. I referenced at the beginning, yep. um, how to thrive in the second half of life. Unfortunately, oh, I mean, that, not unfortunately, that's the part but of life I am now we're kinda moving in into now. the second <laughs> half of life. And it has been a great book. Um, and that's then uh, I just picked up and I'm just getting into The Jesus Way by Eugene Peterson. Oh. A good friend has recommended, like, this is the book you need to read. And you've read a lot and of so, Eugene Peterson, um, but you haven't read that one yet? I have read this one. So, oh. Um, Wait, you're also reading a book with, one of our With kids. Charlie, yes. Yes. Yep. By KB, the rapper. <laughs> yes, because he's such a yeah, fan. <laughs> yep. Yep. And so but you're saying it's really good as well. It's, a, it's, it's pretty a really deep. good book. Yeah, it's a pretty good book. So um, we so are, if anyone needs a book to read with yeah, he's a got teenage great thoughts on, boy who likes rap. Yeah, Dangerous Jesus. Yeah. Um, it's a really cool kind of unpacking of what Jesus, is, the type of life Jesus is really calling us to. And for a 14-year-old kid to read it, I, it excites me because yeah. I think it gives him a good vision for where he's headed in life. So, so four from you, one from me. Yeah. But wow. I mean, I'm like very slowly <laughs> plotting through these things. I know. Yeah. So maybe that was helpful. Maybe there you got a new book for your list. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for joining us on the When We Walk podcast. And we hope this conversation was helpful. And we'll see you next week. See ya. See ya.